All praises to the Most High. All praise to the Lord. Again, tonight's topic uh, is the parables of wisdom, chapter two. We did chapter one last week. Now tonight we're going to do chapter two on Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the parables of Christ um, regarding the marriage supper of the Lamb. So, but before we get there, um, let's go to Sirach 39 and 1. Read that. Sirach 39 and verse 1. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 39, verse 1. Come on. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High mm -hmm. and is occupied in the meditation thereof. Stop right there. Wait. So the Most High God is speaking through Sirach here. It says, He that giveth his mind to the law, to the law, to the law of the Most High. So we must give our minds to the law of the Most High God. You see what he's saying? We have to give our minds to the laws of God. So that means your mind must not be divided amongst other things outside of the laws of the Most High God. Your whole mind must be devoted to God's commandments. That's what he's saying. Hold this. Give me that in Je um, Deuteronomy 6. Give me Deuteronomy 6. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Read verse 3. Start there. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 3. You know what? Start of verse 2. Start of verse 2. Uh, let's just start at verse 1. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. So the commandments, the judgments, you understand, the statutes, the most that God gave them unto us at the hand of Moses. Go ahead. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command ye, thou and thy son, and thy son's son all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Read. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. And do what? And observe to do it. And observe to do it. The, it is the commandment, the statutes, and the judgments. Go ahead. That it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers had promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. That's the promised land, come on. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You see what he's saying? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Come on. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and right with there. all thy soul. He says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. Loving the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, what is what is keeping of the commandments from verse 1 all the way down to verse 3. That's what it means. They read again, verse 5. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Come on. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Go ahead. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. You see what he's saying? That's what it means to give our minds to the law of the Most High God. That's what we're reading here. We must love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and with all our might. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. So go back. Sirach 39 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 39 verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients and be occupied in prophecies. Okay, read that again. Sirach 39 and 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 39 verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients and be occupied in prophecies. So now he says, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High, you give your mind to the law of the Most High by doing what? Loving the Lord your God with all your mind, all your soul, and with all your might. Okay? He says, he's occupied in the meditation thereof. What is he saying? We must meditate on the laws of God, like our forefathers in the days of old. Get that in Genesis. Okay? Get that in Genesis, the 26th chapter. Because our forefather Isaac did that, did just that. Genesis, no, Genesis 24. Yep, Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. Read that. 
Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. Mm -hmm. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. So our forefather Isaac went out to meditate. So meditation in God's laws. Our forefathers did it in the past. We follow after their footsteps, right? And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. You see that? Go back. It's like 39 and 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 39 verse 1. Read. Really? But he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high and is occupied in the meditation thereof. Come on. Will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients so, and be right occupied. There. So when you occupy, your, when you give your mind to the laws of God and you meditate on, onto the laws of God, then you begin to seek out the wisdom of all the ancients, our forefathers of old. You're going to be occupied in prophecies because to get to the prophecies, the Lord is telling you the steps. He says, first, you must give your mind to these laws. You must meditate on these commandments. Then he's going to give you wisdom of the ancients and you're going to find yourself doing what? Being occupied in prophecies. Go ahead. And be occupied in prophecies. Come on. He will keep the sayings of the renowned man you see that the famous man, you will keep the sayings, meaning the wise sayings of the renowned man. Go ahead. And where subtle parables are, he will be there also. You see that? Where, the, the, where subtle parables are, he's going to be there also. He will understand the subtleties in the parables. Go ahead. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences. You see that? You will seek out the secrets of grave sentences. The only way to do this, to understand the secrets of grave sentences, is through the laws and is through the meditation thereof. Go ahead. And be conversant in dark parables. He's going to be conversant in dark parables. He's going to understand the dark parables that are written in this book. But to get to those parables, the Lord has given us the blueprint on how to get them. Okay. Now, let's go to Matthew 22 now. Matthew 22. Read verse 6, Matthew 22 and verse 6. Let's read that. Matthew chapter 22, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. So the remnant is our people that hated the, pro the laws and the, the commandments that were brought by the prophets. You understand? He says, and the remnant took his servants, our wicked Israelites, and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Woo. The, the servants that were sent out to the highways and hedges. Okay? So the remnant took his servants. Get that in um, Leviticus 25, 55. Let's see who the servants are. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. Come on. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. Mm -hmm. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So guess what? The 12 tribes of Israel, we are God's servants. So go back. Matthew 22, verse 6, one more again. Matthew chapter 22, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. You see that the remnant took the servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them because why they came in the name of the Lord. Get that in Second Ezra one verse thirty two, because Ezra he prophesied about this thing, okay. And Christ he quoted he was quoting Ezra as we're about to read. Read that Second Ezra one verse thirty two. Second Ezra chapter one verse thirty two. Go ahead. I sent unto you my servants the prophets, whom ye have taken and slain. Mm -hmm and torn their bodies in pieces, whose blood I will require of your hands, saith the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, I sent you my servants, the prophets, whom ye taken and slain, meaning you took the servants, you put them to death, and torn their bodies in pieces, whose blood, the Lord says, I'm going to require them at your hands, you wicked Israelites. That's what he's saying right there. Get that in Luke 18, verse 34. You always had wicked Israelites that hated the prophets. I mean, look when we go to camp. People want to shoot us. They want to set us on fire. You see the point? Yeah. Read that. Luke 13, verse 34. Come on. Luke chapter 13, verse 34. 
Read. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, mm. which killeth the prophets. Which killeth the prophets, come on. And stoneth them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen does gather her brood under her wings, and you would not. You see what he's saying? So the Lord is saying, listen, how many times might I be sending the prophets to come and gather you from the lens of your captivity? So because why? The reason why they were killing the prophets, they did not want to be gathered by the Messiah. They didn't want that. Second Exodus 1 verse 30. Go back to Second Exodus chapter 1 verse 30 again. Watch this. Nazareth, chapter 1 verse 30. Mm -hmm. I gathered you together as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. But now, what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. Because we went into captivity because of that thing. He cast us out before his face. We went into captivity. Now watch this. Matthew 23 verse 30. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 30. We're still dealing with the remnant. You understand? They killed, they killed the servants. And they did, I'm paraphrasing it. The remnant, they slew the prophets. Okay? They took the servants and treated them spitefully and slew them. Read that, Matthew 23, verse 30. We're going to read down. Matthew, chapter 23, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. You see that thing? If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophet. Remember, he's getting on the scribes and Pharisees here. He's chopping them up. Go ahead. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. So he's talking to the scribes and Pharisees. He says, you are the children of them which killed the, killed the prophets because you are your forefathers. That's what he's saying. Okay, go ahead. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Meaning what? The measure of the evils that your forefathers have done. Guess what? You're going to pay for that thing. Go ahead. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. Mm. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? The damnation of hell is the second coming of the Messiah when he returns. He is telling them about the, when he's coming back. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, behold... I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes and some of them ye shall kill and crucify mm -hmm. and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. You see what he's telling them? He says, this is what's going to happen. When I send you the prophets, the wise men, the scribes, you're going to kill and crucify. You're going to scourge them in your synagogues. And you will persecute them from city to city. Wherever they go, you're going to follow them. That's why Christ is prophesying. You understand? He's prophesying after he's gone, during the time of the Acts of the Apostles. That's what they was doing until 70 AD and beyond that. Okay? Keep going. Thereupon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barakias whom he slew between the temple and the altar. So, so he's saying from the time of Abel, because Abel, our forefather, was a prophet, by the way. From the time of our forefather Abel, the prophet, starting with the killing of our prophet, the prophet, our forefather Abel, unto the prophets, unto this day, he says, guess what? He says, you scribes and Pharisees, you wicked Israelites, he says, ah, guess what? All the prophets that have been killed from the beginning, from the time of Abel, you're going to pay for all of them. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Verily, I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. Read that again. Matthew chapter 23, verse 36. Read. Verily, I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. No, it says, all these things shall come upon this generation. Which generation was he talking about? You are talking about the generation of during the time when he walked the earth. But that generation is this generation in 2022. Is the same generation this day. Because we are in the last days. So that generation is this generation now. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Isaiah 22 verse 14. Watch this. Isaiah 22 verse 14. 
Isaiah chapter 22, verse 14. Come on. And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till you die, says the mm. Lord God of hosts. You see what he's saying? He says, this in, surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till you die. Meaning what? The, in, the only way that the iniquity is going to be wiped out is if the people committing iniquity must, all, must be put to death. He says, this iniquity is not going to pass until what? Until we die. That's what he's saying. So he's talking about the generation of back then. He's saying that same generation back then, today is that generation is back. So that's what Isaiah is saying. But this is a hard saying. Now, go back. Go back now. Matthew 23, read verse 37 now. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. Come on. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets mm. and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen, gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Because they don't want Christ to gather them. That's why they're rejecting the Messiah. That's why when we teach that Christ is a black man, they say color doesn't matter. Why? Because they don't want Christ to gather them. They want the white man, Jesus, to gather them, which will never take place. That thing is a fairy tale. It will never happen. But guess what? That's what they're saying. What, what we're reading here, even as a hen gathered their chicken under her wings, and ye would not, meaning... We don't want you to get us. We don't want Christ to rule over us. That's what they were saying. That's what our people are saying today. Some are saying it out of ignorance. Some are saying it because they are the spirits of old that rejected the Messiah, had him crucified. They are just fulfilling their role. You see that? Now, give me the book of Acts. I'm going to give you some examples. Acts chapter 6. Okay, Acts chapter 6 verse 5. Because guess what? What you need to understand is that during the time when there, there, there was a persecution of the church, you understand, during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, after Christ died, resurrected the third day and went back to the Father, guess what? The apostles had to continue to teach what Christ taught them. Watch this. Acts chapter 6, verse 5. This is our forefather, Stephen. Okay, read. Acts chapter 6, verse 5. Read. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a mm. man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, Ray. and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Okay, so now these were the men that was with our forefather Stephen. Now jump down to verse 10. Watch this. Verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Because Stephen was full of, was what? He was a wise man. Stephen was a wise man. He was a faithful brother and he was full of the Holy Ghost. So now as he began to speak, they could not refute what he was saying. Jump, jump up, read verse 8. Okay, then we're going to jump. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Go ahead. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. You see that? He did great wonders and miracles among the people. And he was teaching. Go ahead. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. So as he was teaching, guess what? They were, they were arguing with him. The same thing that they do with us when we go to camp, they like to argue with us. Yeah, that's what we're reading here. They were disputing with our forefather Stephen. But watch this. Read verse 10. Come on. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. You see that? They couldn't resist it. Meaning what? They couldn't, they couldn't, um, they couldn't say, throw a curveball and he didn't see it. That's what, they're, that's what we're reading here. Meaning what? Stephen, our forefather, was well studied. He applied the laws of the Most High God and he was a faithful brother. Now watch this. Now let's go to chapter 7 now, Acts chapter 7, okay, Acts 7 verse 51 now, watch this, now when you read Acts 7, Stephen is getting on the Israelites, he's going through the history, and he's what, he's chopping them up in the scriptures, okay, watch this, read verse 51 now, Acts chapter 7 verse 51, mm -hmm. 
He stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Right. He do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. So he's saying, they are, guess what? The generation of during the time of the Acts of the Apostles said, listen, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did in the wilderness. Because that generation back then, it was the same generation that Stephen was addressing. Go ahead. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one. Mm -hmm. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. You see that? Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. That's what we read when it says that kill the prophets. Go ahead. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. You see that? They received the law by the disposition of angels. The angels not talk about uh, Gabriel and Michael and all that. No, it's talk about they are the messengers of the law, the prophets. Get that in Galatians chapter 4, verse 14. So we clear that up. Galatians chapter 4, verse 14. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, it despised not, nor mm -hmm. rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. You see that? He says, but you received me as an angel of God. Because an angel of God is a messenger. We are the same. We are the angels of God. We are messengers unto the nation of Israel. Okay? Because we are going to what? We're doing God's service. So go back to Acts chapter 7 verse 53 one more again. Acts chapter 7 verse 53. Go ahead. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? We see that they received the law, the mouth of the prophets, and they didn't keep it. Go ahead, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, mm -hmm. and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Because when Stephen was bringing out the history, was chopping them up in the scriptures, correcting them, you understand? Guess what? They were cut to the heart. They got mad as hell also. You understand? So what I'm showing you is, when the prophets teach, there are those that are chosen of the Lord that will receive this word. There are those that are not, but they are still Israel. Guess what? They will reject it. They want to fight you. They want to put you to death. That's what we're reading. And now Stephen is going over the history of Israel about how rebellious our forefathers were. You understand? He says that generation is the same generation this day, during his time. During Stephen's time, that same generation is back today, 2022. You understand? Doing the same thing. Okay, go ahead. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God Read. and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. Come on. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and mm. ran upon him with one accord. You see that? They, they blocked their ears and they ran upon him with one accord. They were all in agreement of what they wanted to do to our forefather Stephen. Go ahead. And cast him out of the city and mm. stoned him. You see that? They cast him out of the city, meaning what? They put him out of the city, okay? And they stoned him. Go ahead. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul whose name was Saul, before it was changed to Paul, the Apostle Paul. Go ahead. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Mm. Go ahead. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Meaning what? He died. So now... This is an example of the church being persecuted. You understand? By who? The remnant that spitefully destroyed the prophets that were sent unto them by the, by, by the Lord. You understand? The same thing that happened back then, it will surely happen in these last days. So pay close attention, you brothers. Chapter 8, verse 1. Because guess what? At this point, the churches were being crucified. The followers of Christ were being put to death. Okay? Some committed to prison. Read. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. The death of Stephen in chapter 7 verse 58. Go ahead. 
And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. There was a great persecution against the church that was at Jerusalem. Go ahead. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Because the apostle remained in Jerusalem. You understand? That's why he's saying what he's saying there. Now watch this. Now give me, remember, what we're reading here is the persecution started where? In the house of Israel. Judgment will begin in the house of Israel. Get that in, um, get that in First Peter, okay? Get that in First Peter chapter 4. First Peter 4, read verse 17. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Come on. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. So that judgment that began at the house of God is talking about 70 AD. Goes back to 70 AD and what? And beyond 70 AD in the 1600s until now, the judgment that began in the house of Israel. Okay, come on. And if it first begin at us, Mm -hmm. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Our people that obey not the gospel, not only that, but the other nations, what will be the end of them if judgment is beginning at us? So if the Lord is judging us, what about the other nations? They're going to get judged. There's no way that we're going to be getting judged. We're paying for our sins and all that in captivity under slavery, hard bondage ever since, and the nation is not going to get it. No, they are going to get it. Okay, so guess what? Judgment must take place in the house of God. But guess what? That also comes with what? Wicked Israelites that are going to persecute us from city to city when we teach the gospel. Okay? So guess what? The Israelites, our people will be the ones that our people are the ones that go against us. They are the number one people that go against us is our people, especially our sisters. Because they've been conditioned by Willie Lynch, you understand, to despise and separate herself from the black man. You understand? But once that takes place, which is what's happening now, we are in those days, brothers. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. We are in those days. Okay? Now, watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 12 and 1. I'm going to show you. Because when our forefathers started to kill the prophets, we were still under Rome. You understand? Watch this. Acts 12 is 1. The other nations, which is the Romans, Roman Empire, they started to come down on the apostles as well. Why? Because they saw the examples of our people doing, killing the prophets. You see that? Read. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. You see that? The church that was at Jerusalem. Come on. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. You see what Herod did? Herod killed the apostle James with a sword. Watch this. Go ahead. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. That part right there. Because he saw that it pleased the Jews. So the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were pleased. Why? Because Herod was persecuting who? His own brothers. Their own brothers. So now watch this. You notice that in chapter 7, Chapter A7 and 8, the church was being persecuted, but not by the heathens, but by our people. Our own people, they were coming against us. Now, after the, the heathens, which is at this time, Rome, the Edomites, white people, when they saw that their own people, they are actually killing them, we're going to join in on this. That's why now, and Herod proceeded to do more, because he saw that it pleased the Jews. Read again. Acts chapter 12, verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Go ahead. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, mm -hmm. he proceeded further to take Peter also. You see what he did? So he didn't kill the apostle Peter, but he killed James. He took the apostle Peter. Go ahead. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So when we were celebrating... Um, 11 bread, they were celebrating Easter. Okay? That's what was going on. So as they were celebrating Easter, we were celebrating the Passover. You understand? So what he did was like, listen, I'm not going to kill you now. I'm going to wait after I'm done with my celebration. 
then I'm going to put you to death. But watch this. Go ahead. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. You see that? He put, he put the apostle Peter in prison. So he didn't kill the apostle Peter yet. He put him in prison. So he wanted to what? He wanted to humiliate the apostle Peter in front of everyone. You understand? Read that again, verse 4. Acts chapter 12, verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, mm. intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. You see that? Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Which people? The Apostle Peter's people. Israelites. You understand? So he wanted to humiliate, the, he wanted to kill the Apostle Peter by humiliating him, just like as they did our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was a humiliating death. You understand? So he wanted to do the same thing to the Apostle Peter. That's what we're reading here. So brothers, understand. What we're reading here, the Acts of the Apostles has not ended the Acts of the Apostles in full effect. So the people that you see coming against us now is our people. After that, the heathens will follow. Understand, we're living in those days now. So don't sleep. Understand what's going on. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Second Genesis. No, no, give me Matthew, Matthew 24, verse 3. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Because Christ, he talked about this thing. Okay, Matthew 24, verse 3. Watch this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Mm -hmm. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You see what he's asking? He says, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Hmm. This is some heavy stuff that is asked that their disciples are asking you. Heavy stuff. Hold this. Get Second Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to show you something this day. Second Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. 6, verse 7. Start at verse 7. Second Genesis chapter 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? What shall be the parting asunder of the times? The same thing that Ezra asked the angel, the disciples are asking Christ. Go ahead. Or when shall be the end of the first mm -hmm. and the beginning of it that followeth? And the beginning of it that followeth. So now what we're reading here, guess what? The, the, the Ezra is asking the angel, what's going to be the what's going to be the end of the age? So obviously he's going to explain to him when Jacob and Esau was born. Keep reading. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, mm -hmm. when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Go ahead. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Mm -hmm. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Jacob is the beginning of the kingdom that's going to follow after Esau's kingdom comes to an end. You understand? So now they are asking the same thing here. Because in the last days, Esau will be the last ruling, who will be the last ruling gentile empire in the earth in the last days? Esau. Esau will be the last ruling gentile empire on the earth. So guess what? Who was ruling during this time when Christ was talking to the disciples? Rome. But Rome came back during the Renaissance, you understand? As what? America now today called Babylon the Great coming out of Britain, 1776 and all that, yeah. So it's the same people that will be ruling in the last days. The people of Esau, the Greeks, the Romans, the Americans, the Europeans, Russians and Germans and Portuguese, so on and so forth. That's them. So that's what they're asking. They're asking the same thing. What are they asking? When will be the end of the Gentile rule on this earth? That's what they're asking. That's the same thing that Ezra was asking about. Go back to Matthew. 24 verse 3. Matthew chapter 24 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You see that the end of the Gentile rule. Jump down now to verse 9. Watch this. 
verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. So now he's going to give, he's giving us clues on when will be the sign of his coming back. Start at verse 7. Let's just read verse 7 and down. Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. Go ahead. For nation shall rise against nation. Nation will rise against nation. That's what you're seeing now. The empires of the earth, they are going one against another. Look at Russia and Ukraine. America is playing is on the fence. Why? Because Russia has got nuclear bombs, the Satan, the summit. Okay? So they're playing on the fence because it can go nuclear at any time. That's why America is on the fence on this one. They don't want to get involved. You understand? But that's what Christ is talking about. Nations shall, nations shall rise against nation. Come on. And kingdom against kingdom. That's what you see now. Kingdoms rising against kingdoms. Come on. And there shall be famines. There shall be famines. You understand? There's going to be a decline in the economy, the Great Depression and all that. Look at how expensive things are now. Everything is expensive. Fuel, food, clothing, housing. Everything is expensive. Okay? Why? Because it's part of the prophecy. There shall be famines. Go ahead. Lack of food. Read. And pestilences. Pestilences. We're living in those days now. Never there's been a time in history where virus forced the people to be locked down. The whole earth was under lockdown. That's the pestilences of the last days. That's what he's talking about here. The Rona, the coronavirus, the COVID-19. Now you've got monkeypox popping up and all that. Go ahead. And earthquakes in diverse places. And earthquakes in diverse places. Look at Italy. You understand? There's many major earthquakes happening over there. You understand? The tsunamis that was happening in Haiti and all that. Yeah, go ahead. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows, meaning Jacob's trouble, the trouble that will befall Jacob. Go ahead. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. So now while these things are taking place, the kingdoms against kingdoms, nation against nations, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places on the earth, it says what? Then they shall deliver you, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. The remnant, that's through the prophecy in Matthew 22 verse 6, okay? They were going to deliver us to be afflicted. That's the same thing that what? During the time of the Acts of the Apostles, guess what happened? They, they stoned Stephen. And after the heathen saw, oh, you doing this? We're going to do it as well. And it pleased the Jews. They're going to deliver us to be afflicted, brothers. Understand that. Go ahead. And shall kill you. And shall what? And shall kill you. They're going to put us to death. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all nations. For my name's sake. For he come for the name of Christ. Because we believe in the black Messiah, as it is written in the Bible, that he's a black man with woolly hair and bra and, and skin, that is if he, he burned in a furnace. So guess what? The heathens reject that, and our people, many of our people, they reject the biblical description of the Messiah as a black man. You understand? That's why it says, for my name's sake, his commandments, because the biblical Messiah, he comes with commandments, laws, and statutes and judgments. Okay, now, um, give me 2nd Ezra 16, verse 68. 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 68. 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 68. Mm -hmm. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Mm -hmm. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. You see what he's saying? Is that the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. This multitude right here is the nations that are going to be angry when Israel is rising up. And our people will also be angry that are not going to repent when he see their own people rising up to what? To keep God's commandments. He says what? Read that again, verse 68. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 68. Mm -hmm. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you, you and feed that? you. Hold on. They shall take certain of you. That's why it says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Okay? So that's why it says, they shall take certain of you. They're going to take certain of us. Okay, go ahead. And feed you, mm -hmm. being idle, with things offered unto idols. You see that? Because why? They're going to be protecting their idols and the customs that they celebrate that comes with those idols that they worship. 
because they teach Christmas. We teach against that because the Bible is against Christmas. The Bible is against New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day. The Bible is against all the churches upon this earth. You understand that are not biblical. So guess what? As we teaching, we become the enemy of the state. Understand that, right? And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. So now it says, they, those that consent unto them shall be had in derision. So if we consent unto the multitude, you know, getting pleasure from the people, listen, he says we're going to be trodden underfoot. So we're not going to succumb to what they want. We're going to do what does say the Lord. The Lord, was, the Lord is with us, brothers. The most high God is with us. Okay, go ahead. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. You see that? There's going to be great insurrection and persecution against those that fear the Lord. By who? The great multitude that are into idolatry. Go ahead. They shall be like madmen, mm. sparing none. They're not going to spare us, right? But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. You see that? They're going to spoil and destroy those of us that fear the Lord, right? For they shall waste and take away their goods mm -hmm. and cast them out of their houses. And cast us out of our houses. That's what's coming, brothers. That's what's coming. And the people that are going to start all this is not the heathens. It's our people that are in the heathen state of mind. Our people that hate this truth. Our people that are prophesied not to repent, to get their minds right, to fight, to keep the commandments of the Lord. They are the ones that will start this. And then after that, the heathens will follow. Like we read in Acts 12 with Herod killing James, the apostle James. You understand? Give me that in Revelation 6 verse 9. Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. Go ahead. And when he had opened the fifth seal. When he had opened the fifth seal. Right now we are in the fifth seal. That's why we're gathering. Israel is getting themselves ready. We're getting ourselves together. We are in the fifth seal. Watch this. Go ahead. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Mm -hmm. And for the testimony which they held. You see that? Those that were put to death, our forefathers that got killed for this truth. You understand? And for the testimony which they held, the testimony of Christ. Read. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see that? So now the souls of the righteous of our forefathers and foremothers, they are complaining to the most High God. He says, How long? He says, O Lord, holy and true, that thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. Because why? They are complaining. They want vengeance for what was done to them. Go ahead. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Mm -hmm. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. You see that? They should and rest yet. Hold on. They should rest yet for a little season. That little season is the season that we're in right now. Give me that in Ezra. Okay. Give me the book of Ezra. Let me see. Give me Ezra chapter. Let me see what verse I want. We're shooting from the hip here. Give me a sec. Yeah, give me Ezra 9. Give me Ezra chapter 9. Read verse, verse 7. Watch this. Ezra chapter 9 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Since the days of our fathers, have we been in a great trespass unto this day? A trespass against what? His commandments unto this day, 2022. Go ahead. And for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion of faith, as it is this day. So now you see, these are the things that would befall us in, the, in, in captivity. You understand? So the, the kings and the priests, they'll also be taken. You understand? The land, the sword, and we are going to go into captivity. They will be spoiled. Confusion of faith were confused for the Hamites. You understand? As it is this day, 2022. 
Go ahead. Watch this. Read. And now, for a little space, grace has been showed from the Lord our God. You see that? It says now for a little space. That little space is the season. You understand? Is the little season that John the Revelator is talking about. That little season is what? Read that part again. And now for a little space, for a little grace space, has been showed. For a little space is a little season. What has been shown unto us? Grace has been shown from the Lord our God. You see that? Now we are in that little season under the under grace to get our minds right before the Lord returns. So Ezra is prophesying now. You understand? Go ahead. To leave us a remnant to escape. You see that? The remnant must escape. That's the one third of Israel. The one third of Israel is the remnant that is going to escape. Go ahead. And to give us a name in his holy place. Mm -hmm. That our God may lighten our eyes Go ahead. and give us a little reviving in our bondage. So that's the little reviving that we are in now. We are in that little space. The Lord has given us grace and he's giving us a little reviving in our bondage. He's allowing us to get our minds right before he returns. So watch this. Now go back to Revelation 6, read verse 11 now again. Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. Mm -hmm. Until they are fellow servants also and they are brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. You see that? It says what? It says, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So guess what? Some of us will be put to death in this truth for defending the gospel. Some of us will not be put to death. It's not, didn't say all. We read it earlier. I know some of you might have missed it. Go back to Matthew 23. Matthew chapter 23. Um, read verse... Read verse 34. Matthew chapter 23, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and mm -hmm. scribes. And some of them ye shall kill and crucify. You see that? And some of them, not all of them, some of them. Some of them ye shall kill and crucify. Some of them. So that's what he's talking about. It's not, it's not everybody. Okay, but regardless, this is going to take place. Understand it. Now, let's go back to Matthew. Matthew 22, read verse 6, one more again. Matthew chapter 22, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. You see that? That's, that's wicked Israelites that killed the prophets. Come on. But when the king had thereof, he was wroth. You see that? When the king had thereof, he was wroth. That's the king is Christ, all that. Give me John 19, verse 20. When the king had the king had thereof, he was wroth. Who's the king? Read that. No, John 19, John. verse 19. John chapter 19, verse 19. Come on. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. That's right. Read again. Verse 19. Mm. John chapter 19, verse 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. You see that? Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Okay, let's go back. Matthew 22. Read verse 7 one more again. Matthew chapter 22, verse 7. Mm -hmm. But when the king had thereof, Remember, he was wroth. Where is the king now? Where is he at? On the right hand of the Most High God. That's where the king is. The right hand of the Most High God. So when the king had thereof, he was wroth. He was mad as hell. And what did he do? And he sent forth his armies mm -hmm. and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. It says, when the king had the wrath, he was wroth. He was angry. 
and sent forth his armies. He sent forth his armies. Keep that in mind. He sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Now, give me the book of Psalms, chapter 17, verse 13. Watch this. Psalm 17, verse 13. Who are his armies that he sent? Let's see. He sent them for judgment, okay? Psalms, chapter 17, verse 13. Come on. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the wicked is the sword of the Lord. So the most High God is going to use the wicked as a whipping belt against us. That's what we're reading here. He's going to use, that's the armies. He's going to use the wicked as the whipping stick to do what? To punish us. Now, let's get the book of, let's get the prophecy. Get Deuteronomy 28 verse 49. He says he sent forth his armies, his armies. Get that, Deuteronomy 28 verse 49. Let's see the armies of the Lord that he sent against those vipers, those generation of vipers and snakes that hate that did not want the Lord to gather them by the mouth of the prophets that was sent unto them. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, hmm. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. I'm sorry, read that again, verse 49. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. The Lord, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee, you Israelites, from far. That's the prophecy. Go ahead. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, mm -hmm. a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Because they step, when Rome stepped on the scene, they were speaking Latin. They were not speaking Hebrew, they were speaking Latin. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Go ahead. A nation of fierce countenance, mm. which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. You see that thing? A nation of fierce countenance, people that are cruel. This nation, that's the Lord's armies that he will send against us. And we, they will not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Okay? Jump down to verse 52 now. Verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. So Moses is prophesying now. He's prophesying that this, this man right here, these armies, they're going to besiege thee in all thy gates. Meaning what? They are going to surround Jerusalem. Okay, go ahead. Until thy high and fenced walls come down. You see that? Because we are, Jerusalem was, 40, was a fortified city. But guess what? There was a seven-year siege in Jerusalem with the what? A father and son, Titus and Vespasian. Okay, read that again. He's prophesying about 70 AD here. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 52. Read. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates mm -hmm. until thy high and fenced walls come down. Read. Wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land. Mm -hmm. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. You see what he did? So they, there was a siege in Jerusalem. There was a siege, seven years siege. For seven years, they, we could not get food in and in or out. You understand? They made sure that there was no food left. Guess what we started to do? Next verse, go ahead. Verse 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. So because of the siege, because of the seven years siege of Jerusalem by Titus and Vespasian, what was going to happen? Read that again. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. Mm -hmm. You're gonna eat the fruit of your own body. You're gonna start to you gonna you're gonna start to what to eat the fruit the fruit of your own body. You're gonna eat your children. That's what he's saying. You're gonna eat your children because why? There was no food. There was no water. People were going crazy. You understand? Literally, they were going mad. So much so that the mind is so destroyed. You are crazy in the head. You start eating the flesh of your own children. That's how bad it was. Go ahead. The flesh of thy sons. And of thy daughters, Read. which the Lord thy God had given thee mm. in the siege, 
and in the strainness wherein thine enemies shall distress thee. You see that? The straightness wherein our enemies will distress us because they did bring stress upon us. Now, give me Luke 21, verse 20. Because Christ, he spoke about this thing. You understand? Luke 21, verse 20. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Come on. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. You see what he's saying? When ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then you must know the destruction of Jerusalem is at hand. The siege that Moses prophesied about. So Christ was quoting Moses because he wrote of him. You understand? So it says, when you see Jerusalem surrounded with armies, whose armies? The Lord's armies, which is who? Rome. He's, the, the Rome is also his armies as well. Understand that. Okay? Read on. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Read that. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. So what is he saying? Read that again, verse 21. Luke chapter 21, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. You see that? Let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, meaning run. Run deeper into the continent of Africa and hide yourself. Okay, hold that. Get that in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. It says, let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. It says, when you see Jerusalem surrounded, you better run. You better run for your lives because they are going to hunt us down, kill us, you understand, rape our women, slaughter our children, dash our children's head against the stones. You understand? Read. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Read. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You see that? So now it says what? It says, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. So guess what? The angel told Joseph and Mary to what? To take refuge in Egypt. Christ is telling us to do the same thing in Luke 21. Go back to Luke 21 verse 21. Luke chapter 21, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Come on. And let not them that are in the countries enter there into. You see what he's saying? Because why? It was the days of vengeance. There's vengeance that Moses was talking to us about. The, the vengeance that the Lord was talking about, it says he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and kill those murderers. You understand? Those that murdered the prophets. Guess what? The same, the same of our forefathers, wicked Israelites that murdered the prophets back then, they are back today. Understand that. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance, mm -hmm. that all things which are written may be fulfilled. You see that all things that are written may be fulfilled. Come on. But woe unto them that are with child, because our mothers that were nursing, our mothers that had kids, newborns and all that. He says, but woe unto them that are with child. Go ahead. And to them that give suck in those days. Because you must remember, when they, when they surrounded us, it says you must run into Africa, deeper into the continent. Guess what? Our mothers were riding with, were riding with, with children on their backs. You understand? The soldiers ripping kids from their mothers and their fathers. Understand that? That's what was going on. Go ahead. For there shall be great distress in the land mm -hmm. and wrath upon these people. You see that? Distress upon the land of Jerusalem and wrath will come upon the people. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. You see that? Our forefathers that remained, that did not, that did not believe what the prophecy said, they remained, they said, we want to fight. What happened to them? They shall fall by the edge of the sword. They fell by the, the edge of the sword. Many of them were put to death by the Romans. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Slavery, come on. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. 
until their time of rulership is over. That's what he's talking about right there. Until the time of their rulership is over. Hold on a second. Hmm. Luke 21, 24, read that again for me. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Come on. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword mm -hmm. and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now watch this. Give me, um, let's go back, actually. Let's go back, go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 22 now, read verse 7 again. Matthew chapter 22 verse 7. Read. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. Mm -hmm. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. You see that? He says, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. He was mad. He was angry. That was, that's what we read. The anger of the Lord, that's what we read. Luke 21, 20, 20 verse 2, through to verse 24. The 28 verse 49 on down. Yes, that's how the Lord was angry. He sent forth his armies, okay? The Roman army against us during that time. The 70 AD siege of Jerusalem. Okay, go ahead. Verse 8. Then says he to his servants, mm -hmm. the wedding is ready. Ready? But they which were bidden were not worthy. You see what he's saying? But he says, said he to the servants, remember the servants is the prophets, he says the wedding is ready, okay? But they which were bidden, those that were invited to the wedding, were not worthy. Now watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19 verse 7. Watch this. Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice. Go ahead. And give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come, and mm -hmm. his wife had made herself ready. You see that part right there? It says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come, and his wife had made herself ready. Okay, the lamb, get that in John 1. John chapter 1, verse 36. John 1, 36. John chapter 1, verse 36. Mm-hmm. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. You see that? So Christ is the Lamb of God. He is the bridegroom. He is the groom. Go back. Revelation chapter 19. Read verse 7 again. Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. You see that for the wife. marriage of the Lamb is come. So it says, be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. The him is the Lamb, you understand? It says, because the marriage of the Lamb, Christ is come, and his wife has made herself ready. You understand? So Christ is the Lamb. The wife who here is who? Is us, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Now watch this. Give me Hmm. So the wife must make themselves ready. Okay, this wife right here. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah. Okay. Get Jeremiah because we touched on this last week. So let's go over it again. Jeremiah 3. Start of verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, because here, this is, by the way, this is a parable, okay? And she become another man. He's talking about this man that put away his wife. The man is Christ. The wife is us, the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? Because we are married unto him. Read. Shall he return unto her again? Come on. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? So as a nation, we are greatly polluted. We are spoiled by these nations, okay? We are greatly polluted. Go ahead. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. We played the harlot with many lovers because why? We went from captivity after captivity unto this very day. Go ahead. Yet return again to me, says the Lord. You see what he's saying? But he says, yet, although you've been what? You played the harlot with many lovers, one captivity after another. You understand? Worshipping the gods of those nations that held us captive. The Lord says, yet return again unto me 
saith the Lord. Okay, now read verse 8, so we see who this is talking about. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. You see that backsliding I... Israel, hold on, backsliding Israel committed adultery. You understand? We committed adultery with these nations because why? When we were delivered unto them, we started to learn their works, their customs, their traditions, and we calling ourselves by their names. You see that? Backsliding Israel committed adultery. This goes into what? It goes into um, Northern Kingdom. Go ahead. I had put it away. He put away Northern Kingdom. Okay, watch this. Come on. And given her a bill of divorce. What did he do? And given her a bill of divorce. And given her a bill of divorce. That's why it says um, he had a wife. And he, what they say, if a man put away his wife, he gave her a bill of divorce. The wife is talking about us, Israel. Go ahead. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, mm -hmm. but went and played the harlot also. You see that? So Judah and Israel, guess what? We played the harlot also. Judah also went after the example of Northern Kingdom, we played the harlot also. Now, all 12 were in a mess. You understand? All 12 were in a mess. Now, jump down to verse 14. So, we are greatly polluted as a nation. That's where the Lord has given us a little space, a little reviving in the lens of our captivity. Read what you got. Read. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Turn, or backsliding children, says the Lord. Read. For I am married unto you. You see that? Because I am married unto you, says we must return back unto him. Get Hold that. Give me that in Sarah 17, verse 23, real quick. He says we must return unto him now. Okay? Read that. Start, read verse 25. Read verse 25. Ecclesiastes, chapter 17, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. You see that? So this is for all Israel. We commanded to return unto the Lord and forsake our sins and stop sinning and repent. Read. Make thy prayer before his face mm -hmm. and offend less. We must offend less of his laws because now we are offending more. So with the grace period that is being given to us, we must what? We must clean ourselves up with the laws of God. Make ourselves ready before the bridegroom returns. You understand? Before the groom returns, the bride must get herself ready. Understand that? So, let's go back. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. Read. And I will take you one of a city and mm -hmm. two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I, and I will bring you to Zion. So, the Lord is commanding us that we, we are backsliding, so well, meaning what? We backsliding back into our wickedness. He says, no, return back unto me because I'm married unto you. Remember, he's jealous. He says, I will take you one of a city, meaning what? In one city, you might find there's one believer. Look at Thessalonica. Thessalonica has no believers whatsoever. You know how long we've been teaching? For years. You understand? Thessalonica, guess what? That place, right? that city right, is barren of faith. You understand? Look at Sharpville also. Baron of faith. You understand? There was one sister that was picked up, but she also decided to hell with this. I don't want to hear this no more. Okay? But when you look at Macedon, there's a lot of believers over there. So when it says, I'll take you one of a city, we, we go to teach the gospel in a city, and there's only one believer. That's what, that's the, out of all those millions, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, the Lord was looking for that one in that one city. You understand? And two of a family. In a family, the Lord might say, okay, mm, I want this one, I want that one. The rest of you, no, you're not going to believe this anyway. You understand? So that's why sometimes don't be worried when you see you in your house, you're the only one that the Lord called out. You understand? That happens because that's what we're reading here. Read the part again, and I will take you what? And I will take you one of a city uh -huh. and two of a family. Read. And I will bring you to Zion. And I want to bring you to Zion. I will bring you to Zion. Okay, all praise to the Most High, all praises to the Lord. So go back to Revelation chapter 19. 
verse 7. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his mm -hmm. wife has made herself ready. And his wife has made herself ready. So when he says they were not ready, they were not ready yet. Because remember, now is the time when the Lord is sending the prophets out to go and wake up Israel. He went back to the Father. He's waiting for Israel to get themselves right, to get themselves ready. But when they were bidden to the marriages, they were not ready. You understand? We were not ready. So now we need to be able, we need to do what? We need to push the truth more so that we can bid the people to the marriage. You understand? To come and attend the wedding. Watch this. Keep going. You know what? Before you get that, give me that in 2nd Esther 2 verse 35. This is how we get ourselves ready. Okay? This is how we get ourselves ready. I'm jumping ahead, but there's some places I want to go. 2nd Esther 2 verse 35. Read that. 2nd Esther chapter 2 verse 35. Read. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. You see what he's saying? Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Come on. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. You see that? The everlasting light will shine upon us forevermore. So we must be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Okay? Now give me that in Salak 39, 31. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 31. Come on. They shall rejoice in his commandment. So now and we must rejoice. Hold on. We must rejoice in God's commandments. Watch this. Go ahead. And they shall be ready upon earth. Uh -huh. When need is. Stop and right there. Hold on. Is that they shall rejoice in his commandments. So we must find joy in God's laws. And they shall be ready upon earth. How do we ready ourselves? We ready ourselves by doing what? By keeping God's commandments. When need is. When is that need? Now. That the need is now. The need for us to ready ourselves is now. And how do we do that? We keep God's commandments. Read. When need is, and when their time is come, mm -hmm. they shall not transgress his word. You see that? When the time is come, we are not going to transgress his word. Now, guess what? We're reading ourselves. We're getting ourselves ready. That's what we're doing right now getting our minds right in the spirit of Christ. Go back to Revelation 19. Now read verse 8, verse eight now. Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, mm. clean and white. Go ahead. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. You see that thing? It says, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the white linen is the righteousness of saints so we must get what the, to for us to ready ourselves guess what we must put on the what the clean and white linen the clean and white linen is a metaphor for what righteousness that we must be dressed up with that's what he's talking about get that in Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 this is how we ready ourselves brothers and sisters okay before the Lord returns read that Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Come on. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. You see that? That's how we read ourselves. That's the clean linen. That's the clean and white linen, which is what? The righteousness of the saints. Okay, go back to Revelation 19 now. Verse 9, one more again. Revelation <clears throat> chapter 19. Verse 9. Read. And he saith unto me, Write, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Mm, that's some heavy stuff. Read that part again. Blessed are what? Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And he saith unto me, Write, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. He says, blessed are they that are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Go ahead. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Now stop right there. He says, they, they, is it blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
We are called unto the marriage supper of the Lord. Who's calling? Who's calling the people to the marriage supper? The prophets going to the street corners, highways and byways. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, hmm, give me the book of Matthew, okay? Give me Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Give me one sec, give me one sec. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hold on a second. Something I want to touch first. One second, one sec. Give me Matthew 25. We're coming back here. Matthew 25. Start at verse 5. Matthew 25 and 5. Matthew chapter 25 verse 5. Come on. While the bridegroom tarried, mm -hmm. they all slumbered and slept. You see that? While the bridegroom tarried, uh, tarried because Christ is waiting for us. He is waiting for us to get our minds right. But while he tarried, we all slumbered and slept. We went into captivity. We went into slavery. So now while in slavery, guess what? The Lord will raise up prophets to wake up the people. Read that again, verse 5. Matthew chapter 25, verse 5. Mm -hmm. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. We are going into captivity and we forgot everything about us. Okay, next verse. Go ahead. We went over this. There's a the wise and foolish versions. You can find it on YouTube. Go ahead. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, hmm. the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. You see that? It says, and at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now, watch this. Now we can go to Matthew 22. Matthew chapter 22, verse 9. Watch this. Matthew chapter 22, verse 9. Uh -huh. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, be to the marriage. You see what he's saying? He's telling the servants now, say, listen, go to the highways, and as many as ye shall find, be to the marriage. So what's going on here? For the servants to be able to do this, because that's what we're doing, brothers. When we go to the streets, we follow in this command right here. He says, go to the highways, and as many as you shall find, be to the marriage, meaning in, bring them into this truth. Watch this. For the prophets to be able to do this right here, get that in Malachi 4. Malachi chapter 4, okay? Malachi 4 verse 4. The prophets, for them to be able to do this right here, to go out to the highways and byways, this needed to have happened. Read that. Malachi 4, read verse 4. Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Oreb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. You see that? He says we must remember the laws of Moses because God, the laws of Moses in there we are, about to we, we, we are able to read the blessing and the curses, the, the curses that will befall us in the last days, which will identify who Israel is based on the curses that will be what? That will befall in us in the last days. So we must remember the laws of Moses. That's why we go to Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, Joel 3, so on and so forth, to do what? To remember what the, the laws of Moses, because we're going to remember who we are. Go ahead, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet mm -hmm. before the coming of the, of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. You see that? He says, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet. So the Lord says before he returns, he's going to send unto us Elijah the prophet. That was the cry that was made at midnight. You understand? That's the cry that he's talking about. The, cry, the great cry was made. Okay? For the prophets to be able to go to the highways and byways, Elijah had to come and do what? Keep going. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. You see that? So Elijah will what? Will restore us back to who we will restore our identity back. He will teach us who we are in the spirit of Christ. And guess what? The Holy Ghost will reveal all things unto us as the prophets are bringing the scriptures out to bring to our remembrance who we are, what we must do to come out of the conditions that we're in. How do we become right in the sight of the most High God? Elijah will do that thing. He will be what? He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Read. 
and the heart of the children to their fathers. Three. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. You see that thing right there? So before the second coming of Christ, the Lord will send Elijah. Elijah would wake us up. Okay? Now, let's go to, go, go back to Matthew now. Matthew 22, read verse 9 now. Matthew 22, verse 9. Matthew chapter 22, verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, mm -hmm. and as many as ye shall find, beat to the marriage. You see that? As many as ye shall find, beat to the marriage. All this, give me that in Proverbs 1, verse 20. Proverbs. Because the prophets, for us to be able to go to the street corners now and teach our people God's laws, is the proof that Elijah came and left, and he turned the hearts of the fathers to the hearts of the fathers to the children. You understand? Read that in Proverbs 1, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Wisdom crieth without. You see that? Wisdom crieth without. That's why we go to the highways and byways. Read. She uttereth her voice in the streets. In the where? In the streets. In the streets. She uttereth her voice in the street. That means we must hit the streets. We must go to the streets and deal with our people face to face. Go ahead. She cried in the chief place of concourse. The chief places of concourse, that's the highways and byways. Go ahead. In the openings of the gates. Mm -hmm. In the city, she uttered a word saying. Okay, that's it on there. So now that's what we're reading. Go back to Matthew 22 verse 9. Read that again now. Matthew chapter 22 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, Bid to the marriage. As many as we shall find, bid them to the marriage. As many as we shall find, bid them to the marriage. So that's why now we hit the streets. We go to the street corners. We wake our people up. You understand? Sun up to sun down. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go ahead. Verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. Mm -hmm. Both bad and good. Meaning good, bad Israelites and good Israelites. He says, we're going to gather bad and good. Okay, that's what he's saying. Read. And the wedding was finished with guests. And the wedding was finished with guests. Who are the guests? The people that the Lord will call into this truth. Hold this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 8 and verse 3. 2nd Ezra chapter 8 verse 3. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 3. Go ahead. There be many created, mm -hmm. but few shall be saved. Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 3. Come on. There be many created, but few shall be saved. He says, There be many that will be created, but few only few shall be saved. Many, many are called, but few are chosen. That's what Christ was teaching us. Go back to Matthew 22, read verse 14. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. Come on. For many are called, but few are chosen. That's the same thing that Ezra just said. Many be created, but few shall be saved. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called the bad, both the bad and the good will be called into this truth. You understand? Get that in 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. The apostle Paul, he addressed the same thing. 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. Let's read that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Come on. But in a great house, mm -hmm. there are oh, not oh, only... Oh, but in the what? But in a great house. But in the great house. Hold that. Get that in Matthew 15, 24. Let's see. This, who is this great house? Okay. Matthew 15, verse 24. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Go ahead. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see that the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the house that we read about is the house of Israel. Go back. Second Timothy 2, verse 20 again. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Come on. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold, 
and mm. of silver. You see that? He says, in this great house, the great house of Israel, because what? Israel is a, is a vast nation. We, are, we outnumber the sand of the sea. That's why it says the great house, house of Israel. There are not only vessels of gold, meaning you're going to find vessels of gold in the church. You're going to find vessels of silver. These are precious minerals here. Okay, go ahead. But also of wood and of earth. You see that? Now, these ones, the wood and the earth, these are not precious minerals. These are not precious materials. You understand? Wood and earth, that's the dishonorable ones, meaning what? The bad ones. The good ones is the gold and the silver. The bad ones is the wood and the earth. That's what he's saying. Read. And some to honor mm -hmm. and some to dishonor. You see that? Some to honor and some to dishonor. That's why it says gather the bad and the good. They must also, they all must be beaten to the way. But guess what? When they come, there's going to be the good ones and they're going to be the bad ones. Some to honor, some to dishonor. Go ahead. If a man therefore purge himself from these, okay, he shall so be a if vessel. a man purge himself from these, the wood and the earth in verse 20, come on. He shall be a vessel unto honor, mm -hmm. sanctified and meet for the master's use. Who's the master? Christ is the master. Prepared, and prepared unto every good work. And prepared unto every good work, meaning what? to labor in this truth, to glorify our Father which is in heaven for the glorious things that he's done unto us. We're still alive. We remember who we are in the lens of our captivity. The least we can do is do what this Bible says and not make excuses about it. That's what he's saying right there. So now what we're reading here is, guess what? In this house, we must get our minds right. We must get ourselves ready. How do we ready ourselves? We keep God's commandments. You understand? We clothe ourselves with righteousness. We ready ourselves by keeping the laws of God. Get that in Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, start with 13. Okay, this is how we ready ourselves, okay? In this great house. Come on. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. <clears throat> Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God is this Bible. Go ahead. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Read. And having done all to stand. We must put the whole Bible. It says put on the whole arm of God. So we may we be able to withstand in the evil day. Go ahead. Stand therefore. Having your loins get about with truth. Mm -hmm. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. You see what he's saying? He says stand therefore you Israelites. Having your loins get about with truth. What is the loins? Hold this. Give me that in First Peter 1. First Peter chapter 1, read verse 13. Watch this. He says, having your loins get about with truth. Read that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Come on. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. You see that? Get up the loins of your mind, meaning get your mind right. We must cleanse our mind. We must cleanse our spirit of the evils that are in us. You understand? Because the flesh always wants to be pleased. Man, I hate this thing. Okay, read again verse 13. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Read. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. Mm -hmm. Be sober. Be sober-minded, come on. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When the Lord returns. Go back to Ephesians 6 now. Okay, read verse 15 now. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. Come on. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see that our feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is the gospel of peace? Get that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Okay. Ephesians 1, verse 13. Let's see what is the gospel of peace. Read that. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Mm -hmm. In whom ye also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth, Read. the gospel of your salvation. You see that? The word of truth is the gospel. Meaning what? What is the truth? The laws of God. God's laws, that's the gospel. Okay? That is the good news. That's the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is the laws of God. Understand that? 
So let's go back. Go back to Ephesians 6 now. Chapter 6, verse 16. Read that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith. You must take the shield of faith, come on. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You see what he's saying? The shield of faith, because the apostle Paul is putting us in the mindset of a warrior, of a soldier of Christ. He says, above all, taking the shield of faith. Our faith is in the Messiah. Revelation 14, verse 12. Read that for me real quick. Okay, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. We must take the shield of faith. Read that. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Here is the patience of the saints. Read. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see that? Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Christ. Go back to where was that? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. One more again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Uh -huh. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We're going to be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Politics, religion, democracy. You understand? Um, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Women's Day, Women's Month. All of that, guess what? Those are the fiery darts of the wicked. Okay, come on. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation because your head must be covered. Okay, go ahead. And the sword of the spirit. And the what? And the sword of the spirit. Hold on a second. Watch this. Yeah, hold that. Give me Psalms 140 verse 7. He says we must what? We must put on what? The helmet of salvation. Watch this thing right here. Pay close attention. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 140, verse 7. Psalms 140, verse 7. Come on. Oh God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Read. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Read again. Read again, verse 7. Psalm chapter 140, verse 7. Read. Oh God, the Lord, the strength uh -huh. of my salvation. Read. That was covered my head in the day of battle. That was covered my head in the day of battle. That was covered my head in the day of battle. Because the most High God, guess what? He covers our head. How? With the laws of God. He says, I'm going to make your forehead stronger than their forehead. He covers our head in the day of battle. Get that in Jeremiah. Okay. The Lord has promised us that he will do that thing, and he's doing it, okay? Our job is just to apply. That's all that's what's left. The most High God has done his job. He's waiting for us to get our minds right, okay? Read that um, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. Um, read, verse, read verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17. Thou therefore... Get up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. You know what? Nah, that, that's fine. That's also good. Oh, praise the Lord. But give me Ezekiel. That's what I want. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel 3. Read verse 8. Watch this. You know, I'll start at verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 7. Come on. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. Mm -hmm. For they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. He says, all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Meaning they are what? They are stubborn, rebellious. But watch what the Lord says he will do for us when we go and deal with Israel. Go ahead. Behold. I have made thy face strong against their faces. You see what the Lord says? The Lord says, listen, I've made your face strong against their faces. That means you have to be looking at them. That's why it says wisdom cried without. Okay? In the corners of the sea, she uttered the voice saying, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, go ahead. And thy forehead strong against their foreheads. What is behind your forehead? Your mind. And that mind must be fortified with the laws. That's your helmet. 
That's the spiritual helmet that you put on, the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. As an adamant, harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. You see what? Because an adamant, a, a flint stone is one of the hardest stones on earth. Is I'm going to make your face hard like that. You're going to be stubborn for this. You're not going to move left or right. You're going to stay on this thing right here. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Fear them not. He says, don't be afraid Neither. of them. Hold on. Fear them not. That means what? The spirit of fear has to be what? Has to be driven out. The spirit of fear has to be driven out. That's what the Lord says. Fear them not. Don't be afraid of them. Go ahead. Neither be dismayed at their looks. Meaning what? Because they're going to try to intimidate you. They're going to be looking at you sideways, trying to intimidate you to stop. The mission is a goal. It says what? Don't be dismayed at their looks because they're going to be right in front of you. Go ahead. Though they be a rebellious house. Though they be a rebellious house. That's what he's saying right there. So the Lord says, I've listen, I'm going to cover your head in the day of battle. So the day of battle, when you're dealing with our people out there, and the day of battle, when you're dealing with your own personal sins, the things that you still need to overcome, guess what? The Lord says, I'm going to put you, I'm going to cover you. I'm going to put a helmet on your head. What is the helmet? The laws of God. Now, let's go back. Go back to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. <clears throat> And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation is this Bible. The spirit of Christ on us. Go ahead. And the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the what? The Bible. The word of God. Hold that. Get that in Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. No, Hebrews 4. Start at verse Hebrews. 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Mm -hmm. For the word of God is quick. And powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, mm -hmm. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, Ray? and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see, that is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart because the word of God is quick, it hits you quick, quick. You understand? If there's a problem, so you can fix it, okay. So go back, Ephesians 6, verse 17. One more again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And take the helmet of salvation Ray? and the sword of the spirit, uh -huh. which is the word of God. So the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This Bible right here is a sword. It's a weapon. I understand that thing. It is a weapon. Now, let's go back. Go back to um, Matthew chapter 22. Read verse 10. One more again. Matthew chapter 22 verse 10. Come on. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. Mm -hmm. And the wedding was finished with guests. The wedding was finished with guests, meaning Israelites that come into the body, both bad and good, but they are all going to come in, both bad and good. Go ahead. Because there's another parable that, they are, that Christ explains this thing. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. I'm just going to touch on it because it's talking about, he's explaining something, he's explaining something similar, but there's something that he's, he's touching on this here. Um, read Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and verse, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 27. Because now he's going into the sower, sowing seed and all that. Read Matthew 13, verse 25. I'm just going to read through it. I'm not going to explain it now. But there's something I want to get to. Come on. Start of verse 24 Matthew, so we understand what this is. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. You see that? The man is talking about himself. He sowed good field. He sowed good seed into his field, or okay, get into his vineyard, the house of Israel. Go ahead. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went, and went his way. You see that while the men slept, while the men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and, the, and went his way. So 
when 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 when, uh, when he says, but while the men slept, we slept, we slumbered and slept. We slept in captivity. When captivity, the enemies took us over, they spoiled us. You understand? Go ahead. But when the blade was sprung up. When the blade was sprung up of the seed that was planted, come on. And brought forth fruit. Then appeared the tears also. You see that the bad ones, they also appear with the, with the, what, with the fruits. Watch this. Go ahead. That's the bad and the good. That's what we read in Matthew 25. No, no, Matthew 22. Go ahead. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, mm. didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath these tares? The tares is the weeds, okay, the bad. Remember, we go out to the highways and hedges, we gather, the good, we gather Israel into the wedding. Guess what? Both bad and good will come in. Read. He said unto them, an enemy hath done this. Mm -hmm. The servant said unto him, will thou then that we go and gather them up? You see, what, you see what he's saying? Must we go and gather the weeds? Must we go now and remove the weeds? So listen to what he says. But he said, nay, lest while he gather up the tares, he root up also the wheat with them. You see what he's saying? He says, while you gather up the, the while you what? Lest what? But he said, nay, lest while he gather up the tares, the wheat, he root up also the wheat with them, meaning the good ones also. So, but he's going to tell you the solution of what must be done. Keep going. Let both grow together until the harvest. Until the Lord returns. Come on. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, mm -hmm. gather ye together first the tares. He says, gather first the tares. That's when we, that's when the kingdom comes, and then the Lord will be able to use the angels to separate. Okay, you come into this gate, you come into that gate, you're not Israel, actually, you are heathen, you're not coming into any of the gates. Keep going. And bind them in bundles to burn them. Mm -hmm. But gather the wheat into my barn. But gather the wheat into my barns, meaning what? The, the, the few that was chosen out of the many. You understand? So likewise, go back. Matthew now. Matthew 22, read verse 10 one more again. Matthew chapter 22, verse 10. Read. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, mm -hmm. both bad and good. Both bad and good, come on. And the wedding was finished with guests. And the wedding was finished with guests. Both the what? The wheat and the tares, the good and the bad. Okay, read. And when the king came in to see the guests. When the Lord returns, saw, go ahead. Hold on. When the king, he says what? When the king came in to see the guests, okay? Meaning that's when the Lord returns. Keep going. He saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Stop right there. He did what? He saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. He saw there a man who did not have a wedding garment. Hmm. What is that talking about? What is that talking about? What is this wedding garment that we're supposed to have on? Hmm. Give me, you know what? Give me the book of um. If you don't have a if you don't have a garment on, you naked. If you don't have a garment on, you are naked. Now let's get Genesis 3. Get that. I'm going to start from the beginning. Because, you know, there was a marriage here going on. Adam and Eve. Hmm. Representing what? Christ and the church. Maybe stuff. Give me Genesis 3. Read five, start of verse 5 now. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. For God Come does on. know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that? So the serpent is talking to Eve here. Yeah. You understand? Convincing Eve to be equal or above her man. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. So this tree was that... good for food. The tree was good for food, which is idolatry. Come on. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. Enticing the lust of the eyes, she lusted after this. Go ahead. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. 
You see that the philosophies that she learned, she got some wisdom, which is destructive wisdom, not productive. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and he did took eat. of the understanding of this new demonic doctrine, right? And did eat mm -hmm. and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Because at this point, Adam, guess what? Adam here became a simp at this point. Why? Because the wife now started to teach. The wife started to teach the husband, which is out of order. That's when the marriage was destroyed at this point. That's why you see in our communities, the marriages don't last or they don't happen at all. Why? Because it all goes back to this day right here in Genesis, the third chapter, when the serpent beguiled Eve. The same spirit of the serpent is the same spirit that is in the white man today. And he's the one that is pushing what? Independent women, 50-50. Women are equal or above the men, so on. He's the one that's pushing all this garbage on this earth, particularly in our nation. Because the first, the first, the first uh, thing that Satan destroyed in the beginning, he destroyed a marriage. That's why in our communities we have no marriages today. Okay, read on. And the eyes of them both were opened, mm -hmm. and they knew that they were naked. They were what? And they knew that they were naked. They knew that they were naked. They knew that they had sinned. I'm gonna explain that in a second. Come on. And they sewed big leaves together and made themselves aprons. You see that? So give me that. Let's get the precept in Exodus 32, verse 25, to understand when it says they knew that they were naked. What that mean? What that mean? Let's understand what it means. With our forefather Aaron. Read that. Exodus chapter 32, verse 25. Read. Really? And when Moses saw that the people were naked, mm -hmm. for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. You see that? Aaron made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Meaning what? They had sinned. The nakedness was what? They were not but naked. They had sinned. They had broken God's laws. You understand? So now watch this. Now, because they, now they were naked, they had sinned, the Lord had to do what? He had to clothe them. Go back now to Genesis 3. Read verse 21. This is how the Lord clothed them. Watch this. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Read. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God made coats of skins and clothed them. You see that? The Lord made coats of skins and clothed them. This is when the law of animal sacrifice was introduced. You understand? For how do they must what? They must, for the atonement of their sins. The law of animal sacrifice was introduced here. Now, when we go back, um, how did he clothe them? Let's just get that. Get that in Psalms 132 verse 9. This is how he clothed them. Read that. Psalm chapter 132 verse 9. Read. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. Mm -hmm. And let thy saints shout for joy. You see that? Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness and let thy saints shout for joy. So Adam was covered with what? Him and his wife, they were clothed with righteousness. The righteousness that came through what? Animal sacrifice. You understand? Which was from the beginning. So that's what we're reading here. He clothed them with righteousness, God's laws. To atone for their sins, animal sacrifice was introduced for the shedding of blood so that they don't have to die. That's what the Lord did. Back then and today the Lord is, he did it by when Christ was crucified and he died for us so we can keep his, the commandments of the Most High God in the faith of the sacrifice that he made for all Israel. Okay? Now, let's go back, Matthew. Matthew chapter 22. Um, read that again, verse 11. Matthew chapter 22, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a, a wedding garment. Meaning what? He didn't ready himself. He didn't get himself ready. This man right here that did not have the wedding, a wedding garment, he did not ready himself. We read this. Watch this. Go back to Revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19. Um, let's read verse... Revelation chapter 19, read verse 8. 
Read seven and eight together, actually. Read seven and eight together. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. Mm -hmm. His wife had made herself ready. You see that his wife had made herself ready. Because remember, on the wedding feast, watch this, on the wedding day, let's get that in Jeremiah chapter, uh, Jeremiah chapter 2. Because with his, this, that man was supposed to ready himself. He did not ready himself. Jeremiah chapter 2, read verse 32. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32. Come on. Can a maid forget her ornaments or your uh -huh. bride can attire? Forget, can a maid forget her ornament, okay? You know, the makeup and all that stuff, them ornaments, read on. The... the, the um, the, the jewelry and all that. They, the sisters don't forget that stuff. Go ahead. Or a bride, her attire. Can the bride forget her attire, her wedding dress? Read. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. So when we forgot the Lord, we forgot who we are. We forgot what we're supposed to do to get our connection back to the Father, which was what? Keeping his commandments. So now there's letting you know, yes, says. It's impossible for a woman to forget her wedding dress, for, for, to forget to put on her wedding dress on the day of her wedding. Impossible. But Israel have done the impossible. That's why Christ marveled at their unbelief when he showed up. He created planets and oceans and all that. But when he saw the Negro, he saw a phenomenon. You see what I'm saying? Read that again, hmm. verse 32. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32. Go ahead. Can a maid forget her ornaments mm -hmm. or a bride her attire? Read. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Now go back. Go back to Revelation 19 now. Read verse 7 again. Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his mm -hmm. wife has made herself ready. You see that? Her wife has made herself ready by doing what? By putting on a wedding garment. What is that? The commandments of the Most High God. That's the wedding garment. That we the commandments of the Lord is the wedding garment. Okay, go ahead. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, mm -hmm. clean and white. You see that? Clean and white. That's why on the wedding, the people, the, what? the, the sisters be wearing a what? a white dress on their wedding day. You understand? They because what? It, it signifies purity and all that stuff, not defiled, and that's not the case. But, you know, that's where they get it from here. They get it from right here. Read that again, verse 8. Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, Stop right there. You see that part right there? And it says, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. You see that part that right there when it says granted? That granted part right there, watch what that is. Give me the book of John chapter 1 verse 17. I'm going to show you what is when it says, to her was granted. What was granted? John 1 verse 17. Watch this. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, mm -hmm. but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That is what was granted unto us. Grace and truth under Christ. Grace and truth under Christ. That is what was granted unto us. Give me that in Luke chapter 1, verse 74. Watch this. Luke chapter 1, verse 74 that he would grant unto us mm -hmm. that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. You see that part right there? That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. So guess what? Before the Lord returns to, to gather us up physically, we must be delivered spiritually first from the philosophies and the customs and the, the spoiling of these nations upon our minds. You understand? So the Lord has granted unto us what? 
a little reviving in our bondage, grace period for us to get our minds right. So that's what he's talking about right there. You understand? So go back, Revelation chapter 19. Read verse 8 again. Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. You see that? For the wedding, like we read in Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 32. Go ahead. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So this fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Get that in Luke chapter 1, verse 6. The fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Read that. Luke chapter 1, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And they were both righteous before God. Read. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. You see that thing? So we must be blameless. So the Lord doesn't have to ask us, friend, where's your wedding garment? He's not gonna, he's not gonna need to ask that. Why? Because we are going to be walking blameless before him. Because why? We believed and we kept the commandments. We was loyal unto him, unto the end, or until what? Unto the end, whether we end when we die in this truth or when the Lord returns, we're still alive to see him. Okay? Now, go back to Matthew now, chapter 22. Matthew 22, read verse 11 and 12 now. Matthew chapter 22, verse 11. Come on. And when the king came in to see the guests, mm -hmm. he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. You see that? He didn't have a wedding garment, okay? He didn't clothe himself with righteousness. Read. And he said unto him, Friend, mm. how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? How did, why did you, how did you come to the wedding, but you're not dressed for the occasion? Go ahead. And he was speechless. He didn't know what to say. He did not know what to say. Because what could you say? Nothing. You don't have nothing. You can't say, I didn't know. I was confused. You can't say none of that. You can't. Read again. Come on. Matthew chapter 22 verse 12. And he says unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? Why did you come to the party, but you were not dressed for the occasion? Read on. And he was speechless. And he was speechless. He was dumbfounded. He didn't know what to say. Go ahead. Then said the king to the servants. The servants. Bind him. The servants. Who's the servants? The, the, those of us that go to the streets and teach, you brothers that go to the streets and teach, we the servants that he's making reference to here. Read that part again. Verse 13. Come on. Matthew chapter 22, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot mm. and take him away. Come on. And cast him into, into outer darkness. Read. Really? There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. On that day, there is going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is this talking about? This is the judgment. This is destruction that will come upon this earth. It says, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. Now, what we're reading right here, get that in Luke chapter 19. Luke 19, read verse 12. Luke chapter 19, verse 12. Read. Really? He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom. And so to this return. noble man, this noble man is talking about Christ. We went over it in the chap in the first chapter one of the parables of wisdom. Okay, go ahead, verse 13. Watch this. And he called his ten servants mm -hmm. and delivered them ten pounds and said unto mm -hmm. them, Occupy till I come. You see that thing? He says he took his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds. That's the laws of God. And said unto them, occupy till I come. Meaning what? Get your mind right. Ready yourself until I return. You understand? Go ahead. Watch this. But his citizens hated him. You see that thing? His citizens hated him. Who are those citizens that hated him? The scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and those that followed them. Okay, go ahead. 
and sent a message after him saying, mm -hmm. we will not have this man to reign over us. We don't want Christ to rule over us. We don't want Christ to gather us as a hen, as a, as a chicken gathers what? As a hen gathers the chicken under her wings. He says what? We don't want this man to rule over us. We have no king but Caesar. That's what they said. You understand? But what was the judgment? Jump down to verse 27. His citizens is what? He's going to tell you what his citizens are in verse 27. Read. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, Come on. bring hither and slay them before me. You read that again, verse 27. Watch what he says. Those mine what? But those mine enemies. But those mine enemies. Jump up to verse 14. Luke chapter 19, verse 14. Come on. But his citizens hated him. But his citizens hated him. His citizens, 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 meaning his what? His kinfolk. His family members. You understand? Jump down to verse 27. His brothers. Read. Verse 27. But those mine enemies, mm. which would not that I should reign over them. Come on. Bring hither and slay them before me. He said, bring them hither and slay them before me. Put them to death. He's instructing the servants now. You understand? So the destruction, go to Revelation now. Go to Revelation chapter... Um, yeah, Revelation chapter 14, read verse 9. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. Read. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, mm. and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand. So now it says, if any man worship the beast, you understand? That's the white man. And his image, the white image of Jesus, and receive his mark, that's Christianity, sin, okay? In his forehead, you learn of it, or in his hand, you support. Read what's going to happen. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Mm -hmm. and, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. You see, that, that this is the judgment because if you don't have a wedding garment and all that, but you believe you, you know you is a, but you don't what? You don't put on a wedding garment. Guess what? You worship in the beast in Israel. Go ahead. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. Mm. And they have no rest day nor night. Whew. who worship the beast and his image mm -hmm. and whosoever receives the mark of his name you see that whosoever receives the mark of his name the mark of the beast is sin you understand going against god's commandments that is the mark right there so let's go back matthew 22 we're almost done matthew 22 verse 13 matthew chapter 22 verse 13 come on then said the king to the servants, mm -hmm. bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There shall be weeping on that day and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because many of our people, they did not want, they don't want to humble down to the, to the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. They don't want the Jesus of the Bible that comes with law, order and structure being told what to do. They don't like that. And that's the problem. You understand? That is the issue right there. Now, keep going. For many are called, but few are chosen. Read that again. For many are what? For many are called, but few are chosen. But I want to show you something with verse 13. Read verse 13 again. Because these are those that hated him. They don't want Christ to rule over them. Read verse 13 one more again. Watch this. Matthew chapter 22, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away mm -hmm. and cast him into outer darkness. 
There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Give me 2nd Ezra 9, verse 9. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. Read. Then shall they be in pitiful case. They shall be in pitiful Which, case. They shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They shall, they, the they is our, our people who rejected God's commandments, who thought we was crazy. Okay? Read that again, verse 9. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. You see that? Which now have abused my ways. What does that mean? Give me that in Galatians chapter 5. Which, have, which now have abused my ways. Galatians 5, read verse, I think it's 13 what I want. Yeah, read verse 13. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. That's under Christ now. The liberties talk about grace. Under Christ, go ahead. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Mm -hmm. But by love, serve one another. He says we must not use liberty, meaning the grace period that is given us, we must not abuse it. That's what he's saying. So go back to 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. One more again. 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. Come on. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Read the grace period, come on. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. You see that? They that have cast the laws of God away despitefully, meaning what? Hatred of God's laws, they're going to dwell in torment. That's the second death. Keep going. For such as in their life have received benefits. You see and that? Have they re they've, they've received benefits, benefits in their life. You understand? Life was good. They did not have any problem. They spoke wickedly concerning oppression. They spoke lawfully regarding oppression, if you read Psalm 73. That's what is, that's what our people today, they, listen, you read the Bible, say, listen, I don't want to hear nothing about that Bible. That's what they say. Go ahead. And they that have loathed my law. You see that? Those are the same people who say they loathe God's laws, meaning they hate God's commandments. Read. While they had yet liberty. The liberty is what? The liberty is the grace period that has been given to us that we read in Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. The grace period that you read about in Titus 2 verse 11 and 12. That's what this is talking about. That liberty. You understand? Go ahead. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them. Meaning what? When the place for you to get your mind right, you still had the time to get your mind right. Go ahead. Understood not. But despised it. You see that? They didn't understand what was coming out. They did not want to understand it. They despised it. Why? Because they wanted to still be one with their sin. Go ahead. The same must know it after death by pain. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. The same gonna know it after death by pain. So you die now. You understand? If the Lord has not returned, then the Lord wakes you up. You understand? The final judgment, and guess what? You're going to be in what? In torment forever and ever. You're going to know that pain after death. That's some heavy stuff right there. I mean, you cannot, you cannot even imagine that. You cannot imagine. None of us can. You understand? So to prevent all that, 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 all that drama, all that judgment that the Lord is going to bring, we must what? We must use the grace period to our advantage, to take advantage of it, to apply the laws of the most high God. Keep going. Verse 13. Watch this. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. But don't worry when. about how the ungodly is going to be punished and when they're going to get punished. But this is what we're supposed to concern ourselves with. So what is the, the Lord is doing through Ezra? He's teaching us to prioritize. We must what? We must have priorities in our life. We must know this takes precedence over everything else. So that likewise, this is Matthew 23, 23. Go ahead. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. You see that? He says, worry about how the righteous are going to get delivered. Worry about that. Don't worry about how the ungodly are going to be punished and when they are going to be punished. 
but worry about how the righteous will get delivered. Go ahead. Whose the world is. Go ahead. And for whom the world is created. Listen. Woo! Could you read that again? Man. Read that thing again, verse 13. Watch this. Come on. Second so Ezra chapter 9, verse 13. Mm. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and said, when. Don't be, don't be curious how the ungodly will be punished and when. Go ahead. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Read. Whose the world is and for whom the world is created. You see that? Whom the world is, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. Now that's a hard saying right there. Hmm. Watch this. Give me second Ezra. Okay, let's stay in Ezra. Get second Ezra, right? Get second Ezra chapter six. Second Ezra chapter six. Read verse verse fifty four. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter six verse fifty four. Come on. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. Of come him on. come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. And the people also whom the Lord has chosen. That's Isaiah 44 and 1. That's the Israelites. Let's get there. Get that in Isaiah 44. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Who did the Lord choose out of all the, the nations of the earth? Read that. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Excuse me. And Israel, whom I have chosen. So the Lord chose Israel. Go back. Second Ezra 6. Read verse 54 more. One more again. One more again. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. Mm -hmm. And after this, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. And the people who the Lord chose, which is who? Israel. Go ahead. All these have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Because thou did what? Because thou madest the world for our sakes. The world was made for our sakes. The world was created for us, right? Now, go back to 2nd Ezra's 9. Read verse 13 one more again. 2nd Ezra's 9 verse 13. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 13. Come on. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and mm. when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, really? who the world is, and for whom the world is created. You see that? The world was created for the righteous. The world was created only for the righteous. That's some heavy stuff right there. It says, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. The world belongs to the righteous and the world was created for the righteous. Men and women in this truth. Watch this. Get the book of Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Read verse. Because here Daniel is going over multiple kingdoms here. Okay. He's going over multiple kingdoms. The empires that will come. You understand? Babylon. Persia, the Persians and the Medes, the Greeks, and the Romans. Now, and the extension of ancient Rome. Now watch this. Give me Daniel chapter 7. Read verse 20. Daniel chapter 7 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and the mouth that spake very great things. Meaning blasphemy, go ahead. Whose look was more stout than his fellows. Mm -hmm. Meaning those, the empires that came before it. Okay, go ahead. I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Mm. Hold on a second. I don't know if I should go over this. Let me see. Let me see. What, 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 what? 
Um, let's start a little higher. Let me see if I can touch on that. Hold on a second. Give me one sec. Let me see, let me see. Hold on a second. Let me see if I want to go over this. Mm. No. Uh, let's see, let's see. Give me one, bear with me, brothers. I want to bring something out. Maybe if, maybe the most I don't want this to come out now in this day. Let me see, yeah, hold on. Um, no, I'm not bringing this up. Damn it. That's fine, brothers. That's fine, brothers. You know, re just remind me, I'll go over this. Um, go back to Second Genesis 9. Just let's just read that and and, and I'm gonna leave it there. Second Genesis 9, verse 13. Yeah, there's a lot to go over. I don't want to go over it now. Okay, second Ezra 9, read verse 13 again. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 13. Go ahead. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when. Read. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved, uh -huh. whose the world is and for whom the world is created. Whom the world is and for whom the world was created. The Lord made the, he made the whole earth for our sakes. Okay. He made the whole earth for our sakes. It's going to come a time when the whole earth will belong to the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm going to just leave it there. Now, let's go back to Matthew 22. Matthew chapter 22. Read verse 13 and 14 together. Then we're going to close it. Matthew chapter 22 verse 13. Go ahead. Then said the king to the servants, mm. bind him hand and foot and Come take on. him away mm -hmm. and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Really? For many are called, but few are chosen. You see that? Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Okay. I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. That's the end of the parable, actually. All praises to the most High God this day. Okay, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises to the Most High. All praises. All praises. All praises to the Most High.